Good morning. I'm Ivan Berlin from the Pitié Salpetriere Hospital in Paris, and I will shortly present you a randomized study with nicotine patch in pregnant smokers. Smoking during pregnancy is a main public health issue and number one cause of avoidable adverse pregnancy outcomes. In 1997, all forms of NRT have received marketing authorization in France based on the principle that the benefit-risk ratio of NRT is better than that of smoking. In 2007, when we started this study, no data existed as to the efficacy of NRT in terms of maternal abstinence, newborn's characteristics or safety. Metabolism of nicotine is accelerated in pregnant smokers, potentially leading to underdosing and lack of efficacy. We therefore conceived a randomized placebo controlled study in which we individually adjusted the nicotine patch dose according to the women's saliva cotinine when they were still smoking. We included women smoking at least five cigarettes per day, being between 9 to 20 weeks of amenorrhea. The outcome measures were birth weight, complete abstinence, 7-day point prevalence abstinence, and time to relapse. We randomized 403 women. One woman withdrew her consent, so 203 were allocated to receive nicotine and 199 to receive placebo patches. The main daily nominative prescription dose for the whole treatment period was 18 mg in the nicotine and 19.2 mg in the placebo group. The median duration of prescription was 105 days in the nicotine and 70 days in the placebo group. Thus, doses and treatment duration were higher than in previous studies. Very few women remain continuously abstinent, a major condition to avoid negative birth outcomes. There was no difference between nicotine and placebo patch, a disappointing result. Seven-day point prevalence abstinence rates were also low and no difference was observed either. Women relapsed very early, around 15 days after quit day in both groups. There was no difference in birth outcomes, in particular no difference in birth weight. The newborns of the 21 completely and continuously abstinent mothers had significantly higher birth weight than the newborns of smoking mothers, which shows the powerful benefit on birth weight of remaining completely abstinent during pregnancy. No differences were observed for adverse pregnancy or birth outcomes. More non-serious adverse effects, mainly skin reactions, were observed with the nicotine than with the placebo patch. However, diastolic but not systolic blood pressure significantly and progressively increased in the nicotine compared to the placebo patch group. Nicotine patch did not increase either the smoking cessation rate or birth weight despite adjustment of nicotine dose to much levels attained when smoking and higher than usual doses. And finally, I would like to thank for the enthusiasm of all our collaborators and in particular our midwives, without whom this study couldn't have been realized.